Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I am your host, Nathan Nile, and these are the WNBA off-season power rankings. Now, I like to do off-season power rankings and preseason power rankings. The difference is off-season power rankings is based just off of what happened last year, and preseason power rankings are based off of what happened last year and the changes that were made in free agency. A lot of times people will hire coaches, players will be traded or go to a different team in free agency, not to mention the draft. So with the off-season power rankings, we're going to start with number 12, which is the New York Liberty. And I really don't know what's wrong with them. You know, they, brought, they brought Bill Lambert in and I thought that made them an instant playoff team. Uh, but now, you know, they even brought in Tina Charles. They still can't get into the postseason. They're just incredibly underperforming, and I really don't know the explanation. I mean, every now and then, they, you see a little bit of life in them, but for the most part, it's just nothing but disappointment from them. This is the team that, from year to year, it doesn't even seem like they're really growing or getting better. You know, it's just, they're just kind of stuck in this little rut that they made for themselves. I don't necessarily think they're the worst team in the league. I just, I don't know what to expect anymore. Number 11 is the Connecticut Sun, and I wanted to make them 12, but at, at least with them, you know they're going to get better. Their biggest weakness right now is that they're so young. If you look at their starting five last year, you know, you had Katie Douglas, and she was in her 12th year, but the other ones were all first or second year players. And then, you know, Cheney, she had a lot of double-doubles. She ended up getting rookie of the year, and now they they still have Alyssa Thomas, and, you know, both of them are going to grow. Bentley and Bone, they're going to get better. And now they've got two first-round draft picks, you know, third and fourth. So they can add even more uh, great players, or they can make some trades or something. I mean, Connecticut is a team that I put them 11 because I don't know if it's going to happen this year. But somewhere down the road, even if it takes two or three years, eventually we will get to a stretch where Connecticut will just be in the playoffs at least five years in a row. And they'll be contenders every season. I just don't know if we're there yet. Next up we have the San Antonio Stars. And part of the reason I ranked them this low is because last year I put them like at the very bottom. And they ended up in the playoffs. So, <laughs> I'm hoping Lightning does strike twice. Whenever I talk bad about them, they end up playing well. So I'm going to just keep ranking them low forever. But in all honesty, it is hard to imagine them not making the playoffs. They've got a really deep bench, you know, they've got a great three-point shooting game, but now they've lost Becky Hammond. And what that does is you lose you know, a lot of offensive efficiency, she was a great three-point shooter, she was a great distributor, you know, she was a great decision maker and leader on the floor. So, you know, that's, you know, that's a lot that's gone in a lot of different areas. She could do a lot of different things well, so even though she wasn't you know, necessarily, she wasn't the playmaker for the team, she was a key part of it. And so I'm not sure how well they're going to do because you've got to have the young players like D. Rob and uh, Kayla McBride. They're going to have to step up. And we know that they're capable of doing it. It's just how well will they do. And if Gia can be healthy all year, she's a candidate for six women of the year every time. Honestly, I'm going to say that I pretty much expect the Western Conference playoffs to be exactly the same. It's just that I'm also kind of hoping that the shock and the storm like make leaps forward. That's the main reason that the you know the stars fell. Not because of how bad I think they're gonna be, but how good I think other teams should be. Which also leads us to number nine with huge shock, the Los Angeles Sparks. Yes, I have the Sparks ranked out of the playoffs. Now uh, right now, there's just there was there was a lot of turmoil last year, so you can kind of forgive them for some of their poor performances. Uh, you know, the ownership changes in the off season, and then you know the coaching changes in the middle of the season. You know, they they had a few injuries and stuff, but nothing that every team doesn't go through. I mean, I started watching the NBA when the WNBA when Candace Parker got drafted. And, well, long story short, from what I've seen so far, she is the column alone of the WNBA. And so I pretty much expect the Sparks every season 
to either not make the playoffs or make the playoffs and get knocked out before they even get to the finals. Because that's just the story. That's how it goes. Prove me wrong, Candice. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. And at number eight, we have the Indiana Fever. And as long as Catchings is on their roster, they'll be a playoff team. But you have to wonder how long she's going to continue playing and how long she'll continue being effective as a playmaker. Because if she does keep playing next season, that'll be number 17 for her, which is a pretty long damn time. Especially for someone who puts as much effort as she does onto the defensive end of the floor. Oh, and we cannot forget that she does have a lot of young, talented players around her with January and Larkins and Zealous. They've got you know, plenty of talent in there. And you know, they, they added Natasha Howard, who at times looked great. And so she'll take another leap forward next year. And uh, Chanwa should be there next season as well, so we'll get to see more out of her. They've got a new coach, though. I mean, Donut Lyndon is one of the best in the game, and this new coach, I have confidence that she'll be good, but uh, probably not as good as Lyndon, at least not yet. So, like, that's why they're right on the bubble. I expect them to make the playoffs, but I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. Then number seven, the Washington Mystics. And they got a talented young team with a very deep bench. They got a great coach in Tibalt. And you know, he takes his teams to the playoff every single year. So you I've come to just expect that. If he's the coach, the team is in the playoffs. And they they've also got a lot of you know young players on the team, so I expect that every year that goes by, they're going to get a little bit better just because they keep gaining a lot of good experience. I don't know if they're ever gonna get over that hump, get into the finals. But, you know, as I said before, I have a lot of respect for Mike. So, you know, with him as the coach, you know, there's nothing impossible. And then you've got the Tulsa Shock. And their placement is very contingent because, you know, I'm putting them up this high at, under the assumption that they are under, that they are 100% healthy and that their starting lineup includes Skylar Diggins and Odyssey Sims with Roy Johnson and Liz Cambage. Because Cam Beige, uh, I wonder if she'll ever actually play an entire season. But you know, when she is there healthy, she is total beast mode. You know, she's six eight. She's not as athletic as Griner, but she can dominate just as easily. Maybe even more so offensively. Because a couple seasons ago, when Cam Beige sat up the first half of the year and then joined them for the second half, she was averaging 28 points and three blocks a game. That, those are some pretty decent numbers. So when you have people on the inside like Cambage and Johnson who can dominate and then all the shooters they have on the outside, not to mention that they're also going to get another second overall pick. I mean, the Shock are a team that, you know, they've got unlimited potential. I mean, you saw it this year. There were so many games against the, the league's top teams that came down basically to the last possession. And a lot of that was just youth and inexperience. But, you know, they're going to continue to grow, and I think that they're going to keep getting stronger. Once again, though, the placement of them in the playoffs, a lot of that is contingent on just, you know, his campaigns coming back. You know, are they going to be healthy all season? Things like that. Based on the information I have right now, I'm bit, I kind of expect the Western Conference playoffs to look the same as it did this year. Then at number five, we have the Atlanta Dream. And... The truth is, it's hard for me to put them up this high. I do respect the talent, though, because, like, you've got uh, uh, McCartry, D'Souza, Little, and all three of them are amazing playmakers, both offensively and defensively. You know, you've got the emergence of Schimmel, who's a great playmaker. You know, you've got a great head coach in Michael Cooper. And this is a team that has enough talent that they can get to the finals every single season and you know, they they've got enough experience that you know you wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked to see them win it but it's just hard for me to trust them just yet yet I mean cuz so far especially the past 2 years it's been the same old song they get to the you know they play well the first half of the year they suck it up the second half and then in the playoffs they fall short uh, this year, the year they got knocked out in the first round. The year before that, they made it to the finals where they got swept again. I mean, 
I think right now they're in that prime window. If they have a legit, they have a legitimate chance right now of being champions. But I just don't expect it from them. But they are contenders. I'll at least give that much. They are some of the top contenders. They are a scary team to match up against. And then at number four we have the Seattle Storm, which just like the Shock, it's very contingent on what happens during the off season. I mean, the Storm. They are, they're one of the greatest defenses in the league. They are consistently from year to year. Lauren Jackson hasn't been playing. It's been a few years since he was actually healthy enough to make it through a season. So, I mean, if, if they can get her back, and also they have the first overall pick, so we'll see what happens with that. Well, they could end up grabbing the best college player, or they could end up trading it away to add something else to their roster, a proven veteran. You know, either way, with Brad and Brian Agler in charge, I fully expect them to be in the playoffs. They were almost there this year. Then number three, we have the Chicago Sky. Now, people don't even realize that this is a very young team. Their two oldest players have only been in the league for six years. And so, you saw the leaps that they've been making already. I mean, just adding Deladon was enough to get them into the playoffs with the top seed overall. And then uh, one year later, despite the fact that they keep having so many injuries, you know, Della Don missed a lot of time, Fowles missed a lot of time, Prince missed some time, Vandersloot missed a lot of time, and yet they, and, but now quit, and now, so they, st they barely made it into the playoffs and suddenly they end up in the finals. Well, they did get swept, but it was by Phoenix, so we'll cut them some slack there. This is a young team with nothing but room for growth. And I, if they're able to keep their core together, because, you know, Della Don was a rookie of the year, Fowles is a two-time defensive player of the year, you know, and now so quickly they added her and she's six women of the year. This is a team with a lot of good potential. And I kind of expect them to just dominate the Eastern Conference as long as Della Don is healthy and in the lineup. I think health was the biggest issue for them this year. If they were 100% healthy all year long, well, who knows? And speaking of 100% health, the number two on our power rankings is the Minnesota Lynx. Because if they were 100% healthy all season long, I mean, who knows what would have happened. Maybe they would be the champions again. Because, you know, they lost their first two games to Phoenix in the first half of the year, and they were missing players. You know, they were missing Brunson until after the All-Star break. And then, in the, the last two times that they played Phoenix, they won at home, and they lost on the road, but I mean, they were one shot away from, from being tied and going into overtime. So if the Lynx had started off the season a little better, who knows? We could be talking about Bayern Moore winning the third title. It's very premature to start comparing the Phoenix Mercury to calling them the greatest team in the league, talking about how long their dynasty will run, how many titles they're going to win, because you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. You know, there could be injuries, trades, and whatnot. This, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't. And so you can call them the best team ever, and you can talk about how many in a row that they're going to win, but Betty Lou is going to have something to say about that. And of course, number one is the Phoenix Mercury. They did just win the championship in commanding fashion. You know, they have the best regular season record in WBA history. That being said, though, they were basically 100% healthy all year. And that's not a guarantee to happen next year or the year after that. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, they're a very old team. Don't forget that. I mean... I think in their, st their starting lineup, half of them are 30 or end up. They're number one because they were the best team in the league last year, but there is no guarantee that they're going to be the best team in the league again. I mean, the only thing harder than winning a championship is winning it twice. And there's a, you, you never know. Grinder could go on to win three or four championships, or she might never even make the finals again in her career. You don't know what the future brings. So yeah, these are my off-season power rankings, and as soon as free agency period opens up, I'll start making videos discussing all the different moves that are being made around the league, and then of course I'll do my draft recap, and then just before the season starts, I'll do another preseason power rankings.